Good evening, everyone. Welcome to your weather update for October 27th, 2020. Wanted to wait till tonight to do the update. So let's get right into what we're going to talk about. We're going to discuss California wildfires. We're going to discuss the update on SEDA. I'll make sure that this uh, moves down a little bit. That way it looks a little bit better. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so... Um, currently, right now, this is Tropical Storm Zeta, expected to become a Category 1 hurricane, possibly sometime later tonight. Um, as soon as we get official word, I will tweet the latest update at Andy's Randomness on Twitter. I also will give an update on the official Andy's Randomness Facebook page, so I'll go search for it, give it a like, and as soon as I get word from Miami, I will let you know. We're also going to take a look at the Storm Prediction Center, get an update from the fine folks in Norman, Oklahoma. So a lot to get into. Uh, first, let's get into where SATA is right now. Um, wind speed, 65 miles per hour. Gusts are not available. Pressure is at 990. Moving at a north-northeast direction. Well, north-northwest, but mostly to the north-northeast. Expect to move to the north-northeast at uh, 14 miles an hour. Um, before we get into the rest, I just want to let everybody know if you are a SiriusXM subscriber and you have the app, they are streaming exclusive coverage of what's going on with SATA on channel 721. So I just want to let everybody know that if you're not available to be in front of the TV and uh, want coverage from the Weather Channel, and I'm assuming, best case scenario, Jim Cantoni, and I know... A lot of people hate him, but Jim Cantoni's probably on his way to New Orleans to, you know, cover this. Because he is a central personnel. I mean, when you're dealing with Mother Nature and you're Jim Cantoni, uh, you have to do what you gotta do. Okay. So, let's go to our uh, worldview. Pull that up. So, here's worldview. I do apologize. Should have had this lowered earlier. Let's move it a little bit like this. That way, you all know this is legitimate. Okay, so here is Seda, right there. I figured at night, the images from the Gulf, I guess, load clear, from what I've noticed. So, Seda did make a little bit of landfall today in the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, I should have looked up a news article, if I can even pull it up. Let's go back to my radar. I'll keep that in the background. I'll just see if I can pull up a news article on uh, SEDA. See if something comes up on it today. There we go. I'm just checking to see if anything comes up on SEDA. So I don't see anything on uh, SEDA. I just see a lot of New Orleans stuff on it. Um, I know the schools in New Orleans are already planning ahead. And you may be wondering, this could affect the outcome of the election. You know, a lot of people don't realize that um, a lot of people in Mississippi and, uh, and Louisiana, and maybe even Alabama, they may not be able to go to the poll next week. So, uh, that's cause of concern right there. Let me just see. Okay, this is a video. Let me just see if I can look up SEDA in Mexico. See if something comes up. Okay, here we go. All right, actually, I got an article from Newsday. I'll just double check that for a second. Here we go. So I do got an update from Newsday. So. Thank goodness I'm a Newsday subscriber, so I can uh, read an article on it. I guess that's uh, important to read an article. Do apologize once again. You mess up. You have a hiccup. You have a hiccup. Okay, there we go. This is from Newsday. Hurricane warning for New Orleans as Seda swirls over Mexico. So I just want to see... Um, where it is. So let's go over the names of Louisiana. 
So Cristobal, Laura, Marco, and Delta have hit the state of Louisiana this year. So on the update regarding Zeta and the Yucatan Peninsula, Gutenina Rue State Governor Carlos Joaquin said on Twitter earlier today that early reports indicated his state suffered no major damage nor were the reports of deaths or injuries. He said airports were open and businesses and activity could resume on Tuesday morning, though beaches would remain closed until the surf comps. In Playa de Carmen, between Tolum and Cancun, I'll move this down, Mexican tourist Elsa Marquez held up her beach towel Monday so it flapped in the wind, rattling with strong gusts on Monday, a few hours before Seda's arrival. But, you know, this is what happens with Mother Nature. I'm not surprised. Oh, 60,000 tourists were possibly affected. Ah, interesting fact. Seda broke the record for the previous earliest 27th Atlantic name storm that formed November 29th, 2005. It's also the 11th hurricane of the season and averaged 6 seas, uh, seas 12. Oh, my bad. Six hurricanes and 12 named storms. And again, we know the Greek name. But, again, it's one more month left of hurricane season. And sometimes these storms could become nor'easters. So you gotta wonder, you know, there's a chance that something could possibly come out of this. By the way, let's just take a look at this picture one more time. Look at this. This is over Cancun on Monday. Wow, just amazing. I said, thank goodness my dad gets the Sunday delivery because I would have never had access to this article. But I had to take extreme measures to get articles on the wildfires. So this is what this is stuff you cannot make up. So let's get into what's going on in Southern California. Because the situations in Northern California seem to be gradually improving. And um, I know I'm supposed to give my friend Elliot a call later tonight. But I did speak to him today at 5 o'clock earlier this evening. Um, he is fine. We did double confirm that um, parts of Martinez and Contra Costa County did not lose power. So that's very good news. Um, I know... He's driving into Oakland later today for work. So that's some good news at least. Let me just get into this. So Orange County is in bad luck. So Southern California Edison claims its equipment may have caused the roll in starting the Silverado fire. Um, 11,000 acres have burned in Orange County. So, obviously, Irvine, which is a high populous area, you know, you have the Blue Ridge Fire. Blue Ridge Fire is about 15,000 acres. I'm not going to go through the whole article, I guess. Um, ah, okay, here's something specific. Um, SCE reported that um, second wildfire incident saying a telecommunications wire may have struck its equipment and may have caused the Silverado fire. Um, last month, the utility filed a report that said its equipment was part of an investigation into the Bobcat fire. Okay, um, Edison said on Tuesday it did not cut the power to the line possibly connected with Silverado fire because wind speeds were not high enough to warrant it. And also, I want to mention, there were wildfires in Colorado over the weekend. So... They had wildfires over the weekend and last week even. And the good news is Colorado, and I will happily say this, you know, thank goodness <laughs> Mother Nature gave him snow. Because the wildfires would have never calmed down if, I guess, another surprise fall snowstorm came to Colorado. You know, look at this. I want to show you this. This was the Blue Ridge Fire. Look how close this is to homes. That's just scary. And I don't want to get into science because then it will cause um, that. 
But Oregon's had bad luck. Washington's had bad luck this year. Once again, Colorado's had bad luck. And, um, you know, in terms of the election, I know California is doing mail-in voting. They're not doing in-person. They're doing all mail. So I know that because, you know, Elliot told me that. But let's take a look at this article from the San Francisco Chronicle. Okay, so the weather pattern in California, the wind, um, Elliot was actually able to confirm with me. He talked to a spotter yesterday in Contra Costa, a different part of the county. Um, he double confirmed this with the NWS. 70 mile per hour wind gusts were spotted a few miles away from Martinez. So, if that's not something legitimate, then I don't know what I'm supposed to tell you with, with climate change. Okay, so, um, no more extreme fire weather is expected. Um, there is no rain in California. Um, there is a chance that the wildfire situation in the state could get worse well into Thanksgiving, possibly late November. So, it's uh, very concerning. California needs rain. There is no question. Um, all right. Just want to see if I can pull up this picture today from NWS. Pulling this one up. Oh, okay. So the good news is Contra Coast is not under anything else, it looks like. But... See, that's Contra Costa up there. Elliot's up there in Martinez. But Alamania County, that still cause a concern. Um, I would not know if the issue with Oakland's going to get bad. Um, north is where Elliot's smelt the smoke before past couple of months. So that causes a problem for him right there. Um, we know the PG&E shut off power. Um, the update from the Chronicle today was that power was restored to 228,000 customers earlier this morning. So, that's the good news that, um, the issue with Southern California once again has been a problem. So, I'm assuming when I look at power outage U.S., the map is going to be bad in Southern California. So we'll take a look at that. Oklahoma's had some storms, but I'm not going to get into that. Because, you know, that will get me off topic. Um, I just want the numbers from the utilities. So what are the numbers? Okay, and let's go to the specifics. Let's go with um, PG&E, 64,552. Southern California, Edison... 19,894. Okay. Good news with SDG and E. Kudos. Only 56 outages. That is a big sigh of relief, but uh, PG and E has more work to do. You know, that's the bottom line. So does Southern California Edison. Hang on here. Wow. Am I seeing this correct? Hang on here. San Diego County, 56. Imperial. Okay, so only 56 people are out. That's good news. Riverside has a couple people, but San Bernardino. Oh, that's almost 25% of San Bernardino County, almost without power. Orange County, 518. LA County, 2,862. House Ventura. That's what I would be concerned about. 160. Okay. So... Could be bad. Santa Barbara. Ooh. Are a few outages. I don't want to go up there. I want to take a look at Norfolk now. Okay. Santa Cruz 1,944. Santa Clara 298. San Mateo 28. San Francisco. Thankfully, San Francisco has no outages. That's good news. Marion County 1. Sonoma County 8,693. Lake, 3,153. Napa, 5,263. 
Patrick Costa, 390. Solano County, 113. <laughs> right, YOLO. I know that's a county. I don't want to get into that. Okay, here we go. Amadia, 2,395 out. Okay, so um, I don't know if there are many outages in Oakland, but that would be a problem right there if a large city like Oakland had outages. Okay. Now we'll take a look at our radar images of SATA. Let's take a look at them. Yeah, and it refreshes, so that's the good news. So there we go with SATA. Take a look at this one now. You can tell the eye is trying to form, but it's not quite there yet. Now, I like this image. Take a look at this image. So, it shows day into night. See? Very clear image right there. And let's take a look at the National Hurricane Center's website. Looks like a big circle on this satellite image. So, that is just impressive right there. Okay, let's take a look at the advisory for SEDA. Okay, here we go. A life-threatening storm surge is expected along portions of the North Gulf Coast by late Wednesday. Highest induction occurring somewhere between the mouth of the Pearl River and Dolphin Island, Alabama. Residents in the storm surge warning area should follow any advice given by local elected officials. Hurricane conditions are expected by late tomorrow night with portions of the hurricane warning area between Morgan City, Louisiana and Mississippi, Alabama's border. Damaging winds, especially in gusts, in gust, will spread well inland across portions of southeast Mississippi and southern Alabama Wednesday night due to SATA's fast forward speed. Locally heavilized rainfall from SATA will continue tonight in portions of the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico and western Cuba where additional flash flooding is possible in urban areas. Tonight through Thursday, heavy rainfall is expected from portions of the central U.S. Gulf Coast into the Ohio Valley and mid-Atlantic states. The rainfall will lead to flash urban small stream and minor river flooding. Okay. I'll take a look at the models. Um, let's go to our warning cone. That's what we want. Let's take a look here. Okay, so the situation with this storm... You're looking at a hurricane warning from this part of Louisiana all the way to the Mississippi-Alabama borderline. So, what does this remind me of, of course? Hurricane Katrina. 2005, of course. Yep, here we go again. But thankfully, this is not a Cat 5 like Katrina was. Alright, so... We're looking at Wednesday, tomorrow, the earliest time here. I'm in agreement with that. Take a look at the wind. That's what I want. Wind speed. We are looking at possibly tomorrow morning. Earliest time of wind expected in Louisiana. And then you got wind speed probability... That's what National Hurricane Center is focused on. So you're looking at a situation where this becomes life-threatening here. I'm going to pull up windy.com and get an idea of the situation with the wind. Because I want to be able to pull up um, New Orleans Okay, here we go. Pull up New Orleans. Here we go. Okay, I want to go with wind gust. I don't want to focus on... I mean, I'll focus on wind too, but... i got to hurry this up because the CPU is going to act up. Okay, here we go. I want to see if I can play it from... Yeah, around here. This is where I want to play it. Okay, so here we go. The wind is already starting. The wind is coming. 
There it comes. Looking at 5 a.m. Here comes 6 a.m. Here comes 7 a.m. Okay, so 7 a.m. tomorrow, you're looking at a situation. Worst winds on the parishes and by the bayou, you're looking at 11 a.m. tomorrow. And then the worst of the wind, you're looking at, oh boy, worst winds tomorrow could be between 5 and 6 p.m. Wow. So that's what we're looking at right here. Now, what are the wind gusts? 4 p.m. You're looking at a wind gust of... Has to be higher than 60. Has to be higher than 60. Because I don't know what would be the wind gust. Because by the bayou, you're looking at a 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gust. Yeah, there we go. That's where it's too iffy to call right now. See? 78 knot. So, that is concerning. That is, uh, no question to me, concerning. I would be definitely concerned about tomorrow. But what about Thursday? I don't see anything regarding Thursday. And the wind does calm down. But look at Thursday. Look at all the wind. Look at this. Look at all the wind. That is expected. Oh boy, you got to be kidding me. This is too close to Jacksonville, Alabama. No. That's where my friend Layla lives. Ah, so she's going to see the remnants of the storm on Thursday morning. So I'll definitely have to check up with her, I guess. Yeah, see, look how close this gets. I know where Aniston is. It's not too far from Jacksonville. Ah, oh, boy. Yep, I wouldn't even be surprised if there were tornadoes out of this. And then look at this. Yeah. The winds could even pick up in Atlanta on Thursday morning. Wow. Yeah, I don't want to go too far to at least Thursday or Friday to focus on the Mid-Atlantic. I'm only concerned about the southeast right now. So I do have another friend who's east of Atlanta, so he may notice the winds on Thursday morning, possibly. Alright, so um, let me get into when we were earlier. Yeah, here we go. So do we have the official rainfall and flash flooding? Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, seeing that they're still thinking Mississippi's going to get the most rain. They still think that. And then flash flooding. What's the situation with flash flooding? Wow. All of the Mid-Atlantic might get flash flooding. Look at Delaware. Maryland. Parts of Virginia. This will have to be monitored. Because I was expecting the part of the storm to come on Friday here in New York. I apologize about that. I hate when my phone rings at the worst possible time. If it was my parents, I'd stop recording and, you know, do that. Okay, um, let's go now to this. This is what we want. Okay, currently right now, what are the spaghettis thing? Spaghettis right now are, yeah, all of them are in agreement for New Orleans and parts of Mississippi. So you're looking at that right now. Let's take a look at intensity. Yeah, I mean, the best this could do would be a cat one. That's what you're looking at right now at landfall or tropical storm-like conditions. But um, cat one, it's not out of the question. I never outrule the intensity of these storms. Oh, where is my, um, <laughs> do apologize. I want to show you this. Yeah, see? Look at that. So, miles are in agreement with New Orleans. So, let's take a look and see what we got on the GFS. We're on tropical tidbits. Move this a little bit to the left. Okay, what do we got here? What do we got? So, 
here's the situation. We are looking at now a cat one. Am I correct? This is a cat one? No. Okay. Why is Tidbit saying cat two? No, this is going to be a cat one. I I'd be surprised if this is not a... If this strength into a cat two that quickly, I'd be surprised. Yeah, that's why they're... That's why the NWS is concerned about Alabama. You know, that's why I'm concerned about that windy.com model. Yeah, and then, of course, I have to monitor my area, New York, on Friday because we are going to get the remnants of this storm on Friday. There it is. I'm showing my mouse right there. So, and there's the snow in upstate New York. Because remember, the high pressure system from Canada is coming in at the same time. So once again, with a high and a low merge, especially when the temperature drastically drops, um, that's not a good situation. And then hopefully, I'm hoping in New York, we are going to have a clear Halloween. It will be cold, but it's better than nothing. It's all been, been cloudy for now a whole week in New York. So... Yep. That's the situation right now. Let me take a look one last thing at the GFS model. No, oh, my bad, the NAM model. That's what we want. Let me make sure I get this right. <laughs> Don't want to make a bad hiccup. Okay. What do we got here? Want wow, 24 hours. Yeah, 990 is Tropical Storm. All right. But the NAM is in agreement about Friday. See, there's the snow. Yep. And then, you know, clearing for a chilly Halloween on Saturday. I did see the high. It's supposed to not even hit 50 here in New York on Saturday. Okay. One last look at the satellite. This is SATA. The good news is with California, you don't notice the clouds from the wildfire unless you, I guess, look at it from there. Yeah, see? Look at this. It's mostly Southern California that seems to get the bad brunt. See that comes up. See that? That's the wildfire smoke right there. And um, I'll loop it one more time. I want to focus on my area very quickly. Look at all the clouds. You know, I really hope on Saturday, this is a different image even when I look outside on Halloween. And I just hope that you know, these clouds just go away. Because it, it feels like I'm in Seattle. It's cloudy in Seattle all the time. I'm sure they're used to this. But um, in New York, we're used to blue skies. Okay? So we really don't want Halloween where it's cloudy. And uh, not to mention on the last day of daylight saving. I mean, come on. Mother Nature, please cooperate with us. That's all we're asking. I mean, you do notice in the daytime, look how, look how big the storm's trying to get. I mean, thankfully, it's not going to be like Laura. But, you know, we can only hope and pray. So with that, I wrap up this weather update. I know it's late that I'm uploading this, but... Given the circumstances that I promised each and every Tuesday in October until the election I do coverage, I wasn't going to back out on my word. So, Thank you all very much for watching this video, and until the next one, please take care.